Hey, we're working on the interior panel kit for the flare space system, and we want to show you the steps on how to prep your van to be ready to install. The first thing you want to do is take down any of the factory paneling that you may have already been installed, so you have the open holes here. And then you need to remove the clips that hold this these wires in place all the way up to the front. Like you can see Jack doing there, and we take them down around the back as, as well. You'll have to disconnect the lights, which we're going to take out. And we'll show you those steps as we get to them. Okay, the next thing we're doing is taking out these styrofoam blocks. These just lift out. They've got a little clip in the back. You can see right here that fits over this piece. You just need to pull that out. So this one we pulled out. Then we're going to do the same thing on the other side, which is right here. But in order to do that, we're also going to take this headliner and just undo these clips here that hold it in place so that we can drop this down. This will give us better access to pull this out. And then we're also taking off these little coat rack holders on this pillar here on both sides to give us access uh, down below here because the wall panels are going to go in here. We're going to have to pull these out. Okay, so we got the van prepped. You can see we still have the wires hanging on the inside of the van here. It's exactly where they're supposed to be. We just installed the structural metal. You can see this on the left side and all same on the, on the passenger side. These are riveted from the top. We made the mistake of riveting from the side. Don't do that. Rivet it from the top. This will sit flush against the wall. Rivet them all the way up at the top. We just did them right into the beams, put one, one rivet or two rivets into each of these overheads. Next in line is to start with the ceiling. First ceiling panel is in. So we're gonna lay out the ceiling panels, then we're gonna put the lower panels in, then we'll put the middle panels in. We're gonna go ahead and get started with the rest of the ceiling. Okay, I don't know if you can see this or not, there's a wire that runs along through your brackets right behind this beam right here that goes over to power the light above the sliding door. Now in this application, you're probably not gonna use that light anymore, so it's okay to unplug it. We took the light off, of course, and then uh, clipped all of these off so that this is free hanging. You'll need to get this out of the way to put the ceiling up. And if you don't, this is gonna get pinched up under there and then the ceiling's not gonna fit right. So you do need to drop this. If you decide you do want the lights in later, you can always cut a little uh, a little pocket in here to run this back across over to the top. If you don't, we're just gonna cut it off. Okay, we're working on this bottom piece and as you put the pieces together, you'll see that based on the imperfections of the van, you're gonna have to make a few modest cuts here and there. A decision to be made on this last section here to add around this B pillar, you can either, well, first you need to loosen up this D ring so you can get this, this panel behind the B pillar cover. Then you can slide it forward. You can then decide you're gonna cut this edge so that you can fit the B pillar back over, or you can scribe right along this line and cut the plywood, your choice, but those are the way to make the, the two pieces fit up front. Okay, so what we've done this bottom panel is we loosened up the D-ring so that we could pull the B-cover forward, slide this panel up to the wall, and really my reference point is on the seam. Right here I want to be just re really right on the seam and straight. So then we scribed a line along that B-panel. We're actually going to cut that so it terminates in front of the B-panel. And we also measured about a quarter inch off the floor so that we don't have this rubbing against the floor and have it squeaks. And that's the adjustment we're making here to the last panel. Hey everybody, we're gonna show you how you scribe out the line to make the perfect fit for your wall panel with the trim ring. Mm. That's my dog, Leo, and he says hello. What you need to do first is put your trim ring in its place and just duct tape it in place. Then when you put our new wall panel over the top, these come delivered with the panel just slightly off where it should be cut. This is to make sure that based on the adjustments of how the trim ring fits in your exact van, where it fits and how the panel fits, you're gonna get the exact fit for the panel with your trim ring in your van. And all you need to do is take a pencil or a Sharpie and scribe the line behind where your trim ring is. You're gonna go all the way around. And we're gonna take this panel off and we're gonna cut right on that line. We're gonna come back, reinstall the panel, make sure everything fits just perfectly. And then we're ready for the upholstery shop. Okay, so we just took this panel, 
we scribed the inside around the trim ring that we used the jigsaw to cut it out. And then I like to use the belt sander and kind of take down any high spots that, that might have happened from the jigsaw process. And then sand that off, you get a nice clean edge. If there's any little slivers that happen from the jigsaw as well, that belt sander takes, it, takes them right down. So this fit is what I like to refer to as perfect. But on this side over here, I probably got a little aggressive with the belt sander. And I don't care about this too much. I probably, I probably sanded this down maybe an eighth of an inch, an, inth, an eighth of an inch too much. But remember, you're gonna wrap this with, with fabric. You may even wrap your trim rings with fabric. And that softens up this edge a little bit and really takes out any type of imperfection. This fit all the way around here though is really, really good. And as I, when I put some screws into here, that'll pull this tight as well. And I think the fit of this trim ring actually happens to be really good with this particular flare. So that's how we finish this panel. I'll do the same thing for the other side to make sure you have a really, really great fit for this trim ring in your van. Lights, camera, action. These are the lights that you find in your cargo van. You may recognize them from the spot above the slider door. You may also recognize them for the spot above your flare. And you may also recognize these as the lights that go into the spot above your back door. Now listen, the reason I like these lights, particularly for DIY projects and for our panel system is because you can still use them and replace fancy ceiling lights with this light because it's already designed and wired for you to use when you open the doors of your van. So with our new panel system, you have the option, you can move the, this light from this spot, you have to take it off there, and you're gonna put it right here above the door. It's gonna work the exact same way, all you have to do is cut it into the panel and insert it there. The second thing you can do is put this right above your bed, and it's turn it this way, or when you bought your van, it was installed this way but it doesn't really matter. You can cut it right into the panel here and install it. And same with the back door. You can cut it right into what we call the mustache, which is the wood, wood trim piece that goes here and insert it right back into the same spot where you found it. Now, why is that important? Because you just saved yourself a whole lot of nightmare trying to figure out how you're gonna integrate switches and all kinds of other crap into your ceiling. And if you're an electrician and you like that kind of stuff, knock yourself out, man, you can do it. But if you want a really simple and easy solution, use what Mercedes gave you, which are these Fires spliced in, cut them right into our panel system, and then when you open your doors, you have light. And when you are needing light in the middle of the day or night, just turn the switch on just like you would have otherwise, and you have solved lighting in your DIY panel system. Okay guys, upholstery tips and tricks. Here's something that I've found from upholstering now a couple different fans for the Flare Space fleet. First of all, on these pillars, it is easy to say to yourself, I'm not gonna upholster this because it's just gonna take time and money. However, when you upholster your panels and you have left the pillars in their factory colors, what you'll find sometimes is around these corners and behind the panels, you'll be able to see the color. And I think it stands out. So what I always do is have my guy who upholsters the panels also upholster the pillars and around the whole door trim, including the sliding door, so that when you have this kind of fit issue, you just wrap the upholstery right up underneath there. And then when the upholstered panel sits on top and there's a gap between the edge of the panel and the pillar, it, it just disappears because you have the same color upholstery and fabric behind the panels. Hey guys, let's talk about the B pillar and the panel fit here. You have two options for the fit and Leo prefers this one. I actually prefer the other. This B pillar, removes from the panel by removing the coat hanger screw, pulling the coat hanger off, and then this uh, gives you a little bit of room. Um, there's also a clip right here in the back of the B pillar if you have this shape and you can just pop that off and it's easy to pop back in. Now there's two ways to finish this panel um, and it affects how you're gonna put the stuff back together. The way we did this was to scribe right along this edge and along the edge of the B pillar so that we have a good fit between the panel and the edge of the pillar and we'll leave everything as is from the factory. Alternatively, some people don't like having an edge here and having to scribe that, so they run the panels as sent to you right up under the pillar, over this, this clip, remove the clip, and up, up, up flush against this forward rib of the B pillar. Now you can do that, it just means that when you reattach this trim piece over the B pillar, that clip 
isn't going to fit and that's okay. You might also have to trim the edge of the plastic. Now, I didn't want to do that and so we just trimmed the panel itself. But those are the two options. You can either slide it up under this trim piece and then put the trim piece back over or you can cut it out and just leave the trim piece alone. Let's talk about this opening that everybody has when they do their own panel project and how do you solve for this. Now in most cargo vans, you got this piece, which is a great big honking piece of styrofoam that used to fit precisely in this spot and cover the gap. But since you just put a ceiling in here, you lowered this and made a problem with how this piece will ultimately fit. So, well, one solution is for solving for this gap and that a lot of upfitters do is they will trim this piece back so it fits in here like this. They'll trim it so it's not quite as long. That's just to get some of it out of the way. I'm not sure why Mercedes makes it quite that long. But then in order to make it fit, all you really need to do is cut it off right at the top edge here where this piece finishes. If you're able to cut that flat with a sawzall or with access to a bandsaw, you can cut that flat straight across there and then the piece will fit high enough that it slips right back into this spot. Then you can upholster this piece or have your favorite upholstery guy do it for you, which is my preference. And then you have a really nice finished piece that you can just glue directly into place and you hide this hole. You can do the same thing on this other side. It's a very similar looking piece. You can just cut it back. We recommend that you cut it back so that it fits with the trim piece that's mounted right here in the kit. And then you can do the same thing. Just trim it back, upholster it, well, trim it back, cut the top off and upholster it and you've got a nice beautiful piece that was designed by Mercedes and just reshaped to fit with our panel kit. At the beginning of this video we talked about how to prep your van to put the panels in and part of that was to take the casing that came with your van and held this bundle of electrical wire in place. You, you got rid of that, pull it out through the garbage. I need you to go get it. No, I'm just kidding. What we're going to do now is talk about how you put this back up here. Now, one tendency is for folks to want, including me, to put this wire behind the panel or to tuck it up in the structural metal that we provided with you. Now, if you're an electrician and you understand how to pull these apart, cut them, replace them, you can drill holes through the ribbing in the back and you can take that wiring back through there. That is not our recommendation unless you know exactly how to do it. What we do recommend though is now that you have your panels up and before you go to your upholstery shop, what you're gonna wanna do is get some P-clamps and you're gonna be able to put this wire right back up into place here with the P-clamps. And this is gonna be exposed this way in your final product. Now you can also wrap this in your material that you're upholstering your panels with to hide it, but you're gonna put it in place with P-clamps so that it is secured. You might also be asking, hey Keith, what are all these other wires that are hanging all over the place? Don't worry about these. This wire is specifically the wire that's gonna go back up under here across the top and is gonna be what you connect your light with, right? This just came across and it's what you disconnected your light above the slider door with. When you put your light right back here in this spot, if you decide to do that, you're just gonna clip this right back in place and you will have taped it to your ceiling, no problem. Same with this little piece of wire right here. This is from the light that came with your cargo van that was in this spot right here. And when you cut your new light in, you're just gonna clip this wire back in there. It's no problem, but remember, this is all gonna be tucked up here in the corner. If you're doing any cabinetry, you can put the cabinets right over the top of this tucked in here, but we don't like you putting this behind the panels and just kind of crammed in there because you have the potential to damage some of these wires. And if you notice from your own bundle, there are a lot of wires in there. And so if you damage one of these and now all of a sudden your taillights don't work, you're not gonna to be too happy, nor will your spouse. So don't do that. Just put them right back up here with the P-clamps. They're gonna disappear, particularly if you wrap them with a little bit of upholstery or you put your cabinetry right over the top. Ever wonder what this thing is? You probably never even noticed it until you took the casing off. This is a ground for your electrical system. And now you're gonna to try to figure out what to do with this great big bonk and bolt when you upholster your van? The answer is nothing. What we do is loosen it up a little bit so you can tighten these potentially if you want to, still not even something you need to worry about. Remember, all this is gonna be attached up here with P-clamp. And when you use the mustache, which is the piece that comes right across here, there's a portion that's cut out to go around this and you can upholster right over the top. Now, if you use half inch foam as the as the piece for the mustache 
that'll be plenty to go right over the top of this and make it disappear. And that's what we recommend for the ground bolt. Don't try to move it. To tuck it or untuck it, we're talking about your floor panels. We're talking about the lower quarter panels and Gugga Bear just came over here to help us with the demonstration. You may notice that on your floor, if you have the factory floor in here, hey Gugga Bear, can you move out of the way, buddy? No? Okay. So you can decide whether or not you want to tuck this down behind the floor seam or not. And in this particular installation, we decided not to because we fit this in place right over the wheel well. Put a screw in there to hold it during the dry fit. And then we installed the upper panel and we like the fit. We like the fit here between the panels and we also like the fit up top where this wall panel meets the ceiling panel. And when you have quarter inch closed cell foam behind both of these, this seam will be perfect right along here. And so we decided that we're not too worried about whether this is, this bottom panel is tucked down behind the floor piece. So my point of telling you all that is as you're putting this panel system together, this is why you do the dry fit, to make sure you like how the pieces go together and how you want them to fit. This particular piece sits right on top of the wheel well and it might not tuck behind your floor panel and that is okay as long as you have a good fit here and a good fit at the ceiling, I wouldn't worry too much about what's happening down there at the floor. Now, if for whatever reason in your van you've got a floor that was built up and it's an aftermarket floor and you need to make some adjustments, all you gotta do is cut some of the floor off the bottom based on how much floor you added. And you can do that simply by putting the pieces in here, see how much they overlap and take it off the bottom.